there's, but there's something more I, I want to talk about because it happened a little bit more recently, which is Cosmos. Um, mm. I, you know, we like to, you know, whenever you're in another project, you, there, you know, you like, you, there is this tendency to go, oh, look, something bad happened in this other project. You know, and Cosmos went down, well, it was halted for what, four hours, I think. Yeah, something, yeah, something like, like that. Nearly yeah. five, yeah. I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, it, it, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of, funny to sit in glee a little bit but you know there's 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 two parts to it to me um i think it's important that we notice that it happened because it's a major blockchain right it, mm -hmm. i think it's top 10 if if not it's close um you know almost everybody's heard of cosmos it's an it's, it's a very well done chain i th i think like the idea is for me it's the first one where they're kind of offloading uh, all of the kind of uh, the applications off of the main chain, which is one mm -hmm. of my biggest problems with Ethereum and, and uh, Polygon. I think I think doing it that way is bad, like because when one is successful and the fees go up or or the block times uh, lengthen, then everybody suffers from it. Even though you've got nothing to do with that project, I think Cosmos solved part of that problem by having their their and dot dot with their parrot chains, Cosmos with their um, application chains. Um, so it went down and the application chains can, they, they continue going, but the issue is funds are stuck on those application chains for those, those hours and couldn't move to another one because funds move through the main, uh, the main hub, right? Um, or apps, and, if the apps are, right. or, or anything in those, in, in those situations to where you rely upon a hub, right? Whatever's going through that hub could be transactions could be applications, could be anything. Four yeah. hours is a long time to have something affect holistically everything. Yeah, um, it really does. Yeah. So and, I look at Cosmos as like the first step to improving the situation that I really just really hate. Oh, both and on Bitcoin now that you know ordinals are there, right? I just want to do Bitcoin stuff. I don't want anything to do with ordinals. Ordinals and now all of a sudden it's a hundred dollar fee. <laughs> you know, to move ten dollars of stuff. Yeah, like that happens. You know, I mean that, and that <laughs> happens because of the the idea that if there's more volume there's a priority as a miner i can charge more yeah. i mean so it naturally yeah. corrects itself the economy itself does correct itself because other miners may say that they will mine for less give them more opportunities if they do win the opportunity to mine that block it does it always happen like that no but that's the way satoshi designed it i agree mm -hmm. that if you have a straw and you're trying to suck your milkshake through that straw. If I start putting French fries in there, it doesn't go very well. So, a good analogy. So, so yeah, we, we have to make sure that whatever the utility is that's provided, if it's value transfer, which is the one point you're speaking about, right. value transfer, you can't impede value transfer if your goal is to have also, let's say, legal contracts, buying a home or something. If all of a sudden everybody starts buying homes and putting those contracts online, which are then eventually stored at the local county or wherever they're going to do it, you don't want that action, or in the case of ordinals, Bitcoin, you don't want that action to then kill everyone that's doing value transfer, yeah. that they're just paying somebody for something. That doesn't make sense. Right. So I look at Cosmos as like a step along the way to improving that. Uh, and then, th you know, this happened. And then this is where we kind of, I personally kind of look at that Cosmos is relatively centralized because, um, you know, the I'm going to call it the owners of the hub. I think, Voice, you can probably do a better job. But, you know, there is a group of people who... <laughs> Who they're elected, it. right? Yeah, they're elected, huh? <laughs> right. Uh, who band-aided the problem and you know, oh yeah, yeah, made it made it work again in a couple of hours. But they, you know, it, they didn't fix it in a way that this won't happen again. Um, I mean, it was in the code. It was how the yeah. validators leave or join the hub, right? And so you can only have so many. Neegs, you read something about that also. That's right. Um, go ahead. Yeah. So I think that. It's important also to talk about what kind of centralization, because I think that here we actually have two um, two types of centralization in the same case. And one is centralization for the power and very clearly uh, for the hub, you need to have a specialized team. It's not something that 
everybody is able to contribute. Um, so there is a centralization there. But then also there is infrastructure centralization because as the hub was non-functional for five hours, basically mm -hmm. the whole system stopped, right? And so I think it is very important. And again, I, I join you in, in saying that um, it is a great, a great system. What Cosmos built is really impressive. However, uh, it does have some limitations, right? Like you can't just, um, a lot of time you can't just get to the solution immediately and you have to get inter intermediary technologies to, um, to keep moving forward. And, and I think that it is important to see where they're good, right? And it is also important to see where they have limitations. And here, those two situations where you have centralization is actually a major problem because now that everything is going through the hub, uh, then everything is, is locked. And this is actually uh, something that we highlighted um, in, in our sidechain model as one of our biggest advantage is being able to scale the whole ecosystem through sidechains allow to basically avoid uh, connecting everything and putting everything at risk when you deploy something. So here, mm -hmm. I mean, the thing that happened is not something that is scary or um, very problematic. They pushed an update. Um, it didn't go as they expected and they had to push a patch uh, uh, quickly. But again, the problem is the centralization of that hub um, in terms of infrastructure. The problem is that it blocked everything, right? So if you have yeah. every service on each of their uh, own sidechain, then it could only block that sidechain and nothing else. Nothing, no other service would be would be locked by this kind of operations. And yeah, this is this is an obvious risk that you have when you put everything through a central hub. Yeah, and that's yeah. very different than, uh, again, I agree. I think Cosmos is, a, they have their own philosophy for building. Um, I think they put a lot of work into it. I think there is that, you, you don't want to be critical because you can see what kind of work has gone into it. And you both know I've worked for other networks that are interoperable. And so I have some biases that go along there. Um, the point being is that the work, yes, but there is a consistent pooling together of resources. And in the case where you have a hub experience this and breaks everything, it it's, it's not the team that centralizes it because every Bitcoin core update means people put that in there and they push that out. But the way it updates and the way miners update one miner doesn't affect everything or the process for that one miner who may have updated or wherever that was pushed to doesn't affect everyone all at the same time. There has to be some consensus, a majority consensus. I think BIP9 is what they're using now before they do updates. But um, it it's really makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable. It doesn't mean that they're not a, a good blockchain. It's just not my preference. And I think that's where we we come into um, helping blockchains like this, helping blockchains uh, improve even more so their interoperability. They can still have their own utility processes. That's a big congratulations for them, especially as they do these updates. I mean, Solana has had similar, not technologically speaking, but they've had similar pauses in the blockchain. That makes anyone who says decentralization uncomfortable, but we can help other blockchains even um, integrate some of our protocols. And so that is where we have to come together and help each other as opposed to say, hey, you stink. No, you don't stink. You got a good idea. You know, it, 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 it doesn't mean you change what you're doing, but you can kind of do these kinds of things and we can all work together better and uh, maybe lessen some of those probabilities. Yeah.